Hello, Oscillator Sync here, and welcome to the first video in a new series for the channel where we look at building patches from scratch on the Korg Volker FM. This series is going to be a kind of companion to the understanding sound design on the Volker FM series that I've been running on the channel for a number of weeks now. And in that series, we've been looking at the individual elements of patch creation on the Volker. Uh, and what I wanted to do is put out a number of videos where we take all of those concepts and put them into practice and hopefully build some cool sounding patches along the way. So we'll get on with the uh, sounds really soon, but just briefly, here's a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, first of all, um, I'm going to be using my free browser-based patch editor for the Volker FM to build the patches. A um, couple of reasons for that. Uh, the first, honestly, is it, it is just faster than uh, constantly menu diving on the Volker FM. It's kind of the main reason that I, I built it in the first place. But I think also from a learning perspective, it is a lot easier to understand what's going on in the patches when we can see everything laid out all at once rather than trying to keep track of what parameters we've tweaked and just trying to remember what we've done. Uh, and the third reason, uh, I guess, is that once we're done, um, it's really easy for me to click this button and share with you the finished patch so that you can take it and tweak it and, and play with it and, and sort of revisit what we've done in the video. So another thing that I think is worth mentioning is that uh, when I say I'm building a patch from scratch, I, I really am building a patch from scratch. Um, I haven't sort of pre-rehearsed building the patch that I'm about to do. Um, so there might be along the way some uh, not so great sounds, some some maybe some mistakes that I make. Um, but I think those are worth sort of keeping and I won't be editing those out because uh, mistakes are a good learning experience as well as uh, the good stuff, obviously. So I hope you guys don't mind when I make some dreadful noises along the way. Uh, hopefully not too many of them, um, but there might be some. Uh, finally, uh, as to uh, the type of patch that I'm going to be building, well, I put out a poll on my Facebook page. If you're not following me on Facebook, there is a link in the video description. Uh, it's Maybe worth following if you're interested in the stuff that I'm working on, because I, I do teasers for patches and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, I put out a poll and I asked people what type of patch do you want to see? And overwhelmingly, almost without uh, any contest, actually, uh, people were asking for pads. So I think the first couple of videos in the series, I'm going to be looking at some pads. And then we'll move on to some, some bass and some percussion and some leads and that sort of stuff as well. So let's actually get on with building the patch. So I've got an initialized patch. Like that, and I've also got a uh, sequence uh, pre-recorded just so once we've got a bit further into the patch, I've got something to sort of play against and and, and loop round. Uh, but I'm going to start by coming down here and picking my algorithm. So in the world of sort of subtractive analog synths, one of the ways that we get our richness for our pad sounds is by uh, layering up a number of voices, a number of oscillators. And that's certainly a legitimate tactic in FM as well, but I thought for this video, I do something that is sort of uniquely FM, and that's I'm going to use an algorithm which only has a single carrier, but then quite a complex network of uh, operators modulating that carrier. So I'm going to go with um, algorithm 18, which I'll also just flash up on the screen uh, for reference. So we can see here that we've got a single carrier, uh, which is operator 1, and then we've got... Um, um, uh, operator 2 is modulating it, operator 3 is modulating it, and also has feedback if we want. And we've also then got uh, a row of 4, 5, and 6 all modulating each other and then flowing into operator 1. So it's quite a complex uh, algorithm, but uh, let's see what we can do with it. So I'm just going to turn off most of my operators just to begin with, uh, just because I want to um, start by just getting the overall envelope of the carrier. I've left operator 3 on just so we've got some colour so we can hear it a little bit better. Uh, so classic pad kind of thing. Let's give it a bit of a slower attack, shall we? Yep. Uh, and then let's, of course, also give it a bit of a longer release. So you can hear there at the moment when I release the key, although I've got that release, it sort of drops off. And so that is happening because at the moment, um, my only modulator uh, has a very, very short release for um, release four, which means that it's sort of cutting off almost as soon as I release the key. So if I just want to make that sound a bit more natural, let's just. Cool, there we go. Okay, so that's um, that's kind of our starting point. So let's um, 
start looking at our operator three here. Um, we might come back up to here uh, and tweak a couple of bits and pieces, but that's kind of a good starting point. Uh, so um, let's talk about uh, getting a bit more richness even just off this one operator. So let's add a bit of detune perhaps. Immediately we start getting that kind of beating. So one of the things to bear in mind when you're dealing with a algorithm with so many modulators run into a single carrier is we're probably going to have to keep our operator output levels a little bit more conservative. I'm going to leave them kind of where they are around 90 to begin with, but we'll probably have to bring them down as we start to bring in some of the other operators. Okay, um, let's um, come down here and let's take, take a look at this feedback. So feedback means that operator 3, as well as modulating uh, operator 1, is also modulating itself. And we can get... It's almost like introducing resonance, if you like. Here it's got a bit of sharp sharpness. See, it's almost like a resonant filter now. So that's probably pushing it a bit too far, so let's bring that operator level down a touch. Just like that. Okay, that's probably a nice starting point with that one. So what I'm going to do now is turn on operator 2 as well. That's our other operator that's sort of just sitting on its own. Uh, let's give it a longer release as well. You can immediately hear that they're beating against each other in quite a cool way. So let's find a tonality that really works. Let's try some different tunings. Oh wow. See see this is this is what this is what FM can do that that uh, analog can't do. I mean there's no phaser or anything, no external effect. It's just the because we've got two modulators all hitting this one carrier and they're just beating off each other in a really interesting way. Let's level that down so it's not getting quite as... Uh, so one thing that I like to experiment with is uh, sometimes it's uh, it's tempting just to leave the fine control alone unless you're doing like sort of bell sounds. But let's, let's, let's just try just a moderate amount of... Oh, sorry, a very minor amount of fine... Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, we can probably push this output a bit more, maybe. Kind of brassy, but also paddy at the same time. That's really cool. Um, perhaps uh, we could also have this operator sort of fade in a bit more as well. So we'll increase, um, or rather um, decrease the rate of envelope generator at part one. Just try a lower uh, octave there. <laughs> it's really cool because the beating becomes less uh, less rapid as we go down the scale. So we've kind of got this movement throughout the whole of our sound at the moment. So that's a really um, positive start. Maybe just make that fade in slightly slower. So here we can hear now that we've got that purity right at the start of the note and then it gets that, that that beating kind of comes in afterwards yeah like that like that a lot okay so uh, that's that's a great start um, but we've still got another operator that we can modulate into um, our carrier so let's turn that on as well okay so uh, let's give it a longer release like the other ones Do you know what, I'm just going to set the uh, uh, sequence going so I can... Um... Okay, so things are, are getting pretty crazy now because we're hitting so much... So much coming in now. So let's try to find a different tonality here. Maybe let's... A bit more of a sparkle over the top by increasing this course control. Okay, so that's obviously far too much at the moment. 
but there's something about that that I quite like. So let's just reduce the output level of the operator just to try and find a bit more of a controlled sound there. Maybe have that fade in a bit more as well. Mess with the detune a bit. I'm just going to drop it down a tiny bit more in anticipation of the fact that we've still got these two other operators that are going to modulate into that modulator. So we're going to be able to get far more complex sounds on the go. So let's, let's do that. Let's bring in this operator 5, see what it does. I think it's starting to get pretty interesting there. Okay, let's make this one come in real slow, shall we? Actually, change my mind. Let's make it come real fast, but then have it drop off pretty quickly. Kind of getting a ghostly sort of groan happening behind it. Now, this is one of those things that I'm probably going to dial out a little bit with the velocity when I get there. I'm just trying to get this bass sound happening first. Okay, let's try the detune a bit. Let's be brave and let's try let's try the fine tune a bit. Okay. <laughs> Too much. Uh, let's try that. Okay, so there's some interesting stuff happening there. Okay, so uh, I'm always scared to put in Operator 6, but let's give it a go, let's see what happens. Things are getting real buzzy now. But actually, on those upper registers, that's kind of cool. Okay, let's um, let's mess with the tune a bit. Okay, that's got something to it. Let's get a bit more of a paddy. Obviously there's too much of it at the moment, but let's just get um, an envelope working there. So we kind of want it to die down. There's a point during that sweep where it has this lovely hollowness. Let's see if we can get it to linger there a bit longer. So what I'm doing here is just adjusting the second part of the envelope here. Still getting past it. Okay, let's reduce the operator the output level because that's, that's too much fizz, but... Okay, so... At the moment we've got a sound which is... Cool. I'm really getting into that kind of hollow noise. Go away, antivirus. That hollow noise that's uh, happening there. 
Okay, so let's um, see what else we can do that. So at the moment we've got a sound that, um, although it sounds pretty cool at the moment, what it's not doing is it's not changing with the velocity at the moment. So that's kind of what I tend to do once I've got a nice sort of bass sound to work with. Um, let's um, let's work with the velocity. So the first thing that's obvious f to me that I want to adjust with that velocity is all, all of that fizz, which is coming from operator six. So let's let's turn the uh, sense up. So now that is let's start the uh, okay. So that's with the velocity turned down, and let's switch it up. So that fizz is coming in only on that those harder notes and then stuff in the middle. But I think probably similarly we can take an approach and apply a bit of key velocity sense to operator five as well. So that's with velocity down and up in the middle. And I think probably across the board we can put just a bit of key velocity sense for all of our other modulators. So one thing to bear in mind when you're doing the key velocity sense, you can hear now everything seems to be more over the top than it was. The key velocity sense means that when the velocity is on full, the operator is actually going to be uh, boosted above the level that we've got here. So we can probably turn that down a bit on all of these, just a little bit. So that's uh, velocity in the middle. A little bit of that hollowness there. Not too much. Turn it down a bit more. So it's pretty mellow, actually. The velocity down. Real mellow with all the way down. Kind of cool though. Okay. So now we've got the velocity happening. Uh, let's talk about LFO. Uh, now this has already got quite a lot of wobble because of the beating, but let's let's just try a little bit of pitch modulation. So I'll turn the pitch mod sensitivity up a little bit. Give us a bit of LFO speed, and turn the pitch mod depth up a bit. Okay. Okay, I can actually dig a bit of pitch mod on there despite all of the wobbly that's already happening. So that feels like a bit too much. Let's turn the depth down a little bit. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, let's turn the velocity up. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of LFO delay on there, just so it doesn't come straight and get a bit more purity at the start of the note. Maybe a little bit longer on the delay there. Okay, so um, the other thing that is jumping out at me is that I kind of want to put some amp modulation on probably maybe operator six so that that kind of fizziness has a bit of wobble to it. A bit more. Okay, so that's not making that much difference, but we need to apply it to uh, operator four. Not really getting the effect that I'm looking for. I 
think there's so much beating and moving that it's not really being pulled out so much. Okay. So we'll leave the amp modulation for a little bit. So uh, next thing to take a look at is how well this patch is working kind of across all the registers. So let's, um, let's drop the octave down a couple of uh, octaves and see how it feels. Okay, that's kind of cool. It's kind of made me thinking that the release isn't long enough now that I'm hearing it in a low register, so let's just drop that down a bit. Okay, let's try that with the um, velocity down a bit. down. Yeah, that's feeling pretty balanced to be fair. Yep, yeah, no, I'm happy with that. Okay, so let's try something in the upper registers. Okay, so that's with the velocity order. Obviously that is too fizzy. So in the middle. Yeah, so in general, I think the sound at the moment gets too fizzy in the upper registers. So what that means, uh, we want to apply some of our operator scaling, our level scaling here. Uh, so we're interesting, uh, if we're talking about the upper part of the register with the right depth, we want to make sure that our curve here is a negative, so at the moment it's negative linear. We'll try that, and let's just bring up the depth on some of these and see what happens. Oh, sorry, the right depth, what am I doing? That's already sounding way more balanced. Kind of feel like we don't need quite as much fizz. So let's turn the right depth up on six. Sounds like it's a weird aliasing as well. Ah, there we go. Okay, let's get five down. Okay, let's make sure that hasn't affected us too much in the... Uh, lower registers. If it has, then we need to adjust our break point a bit. Okay, that still feels like we've got all the fists that we need, but now when we go up higher... Okay, I think we can probably afford to push that depth a bit more. here on that on that those two lower chords there's higher chords there the depth has hit is pretty hard on these lower chords not so much that tells me we can probably drop our break point a little bit and have the uh, scaling start a little bit earlier on the keyboard maybe let's try 40 see how that goes Ah, okay. So that's pretty much taken it out altogether, which makes me think that the depth is probably a little bit too high. So we can pull that back a little bit. We came back to where we were to be with. Still got the fuzz. 
and the fizz there. We can drop our velocity down, and that's when it sort of. Yeah. Okay, it's an octave down. It's two octaves down. Okay, so this is a bit of interesting fine tuning because that three octaves down is still kind of playable, but I'd argue that by the time we get to even. Before we get to three octaves up, it's not as useful, so. Maybe what we do here on our global voice is that we transpose the whole patch down an octave. Yeah. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about that. So, um, one other thing that might be worth looking at I know, I, I do this so much that it's almost cliche as far as I'm concerned now. Is it might be nice to have a little bit of a pitch sort of swoop happening. Um, so the way that, the easiest way to do that is to set your um, pitch envelope R1 and R2 to be as fast as possible. Uh, and then have L2's level just a bit lower. Yeah, that kind of sweep up. It's too much. I just really like that on a pad. And we can speed that up, of course, by... Um, so we're getting to L1 in the middle here as fast as we possibly can, and then straight away getting down to what we hear is our sweep. We don't really hear getting down to the low point because we're still fading in the noise there. And then we're jumping from this low point here up to the midpoint again uh, at the rate defined by R3 here. So we can probably make it a little bit faster. Yeah, it's nice. I'm feeling now that at the highest velocity, we could probably afford to make these modulators ever so slightly lower so it's not quite as obvious. I don't know, I might just being cautious here. Maybe let's just try just down to the two notches across the board just to see what that's like. I think that's more balanced, right? Still got that fizz, but... Yeah, I think that's more balanced across the whole range now. That's about... It's about halfway on the velocity slider. We've just got that nice... rasp there. That's... Velocity all the way off. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, that's uh, a pretty cool sound, actually. Um, right, so uh, most important thing, let's give it a name. I am going to call this, I'm sad to say, Pad 1, just so that I can easily keep track of it. I am going to uh, create a shareable link so that I can share that patch with you guys. The link, this link here, will be in the description of the video so you can get straight to the patch and have a play. And I'm going to save it just so that I don't forget to save it later okay um and that's a pad patch um i will do another video on a pad um as the next build a patch from scratch video um but we'll take a more sort of um fm does analog type approach and use sort of multiple voices to try and get richness that way rather than 
uh, via our modulators. But I think what we've ended up with here is a very FME kind of pad, which um, kind of what I wanted to show off first. Anyway, I hope you enjoy that, guys. I hope that wasn't too long to sit through. I hope uh, you picked up some tricks and some ideas for your own patches uh, as we were making our way through that patch. Um, if you did enjoy the video, please do give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to the channel so that uh, you don't miss out on any of the upcoming videos on the Volker FM and other synthesis fun as well. Um, I will be carrying on with the uh, sound design um, series. Uh, there's a couple more topics, uh, a couple more parameters uh, that I want to discuss before that is all done. And I'll be putting out a bunch more of these sort of patch from scratch videos. And we'll look at pads, obviously, because uh, everyone <laughs> seems to want the pads. But we'll also look at some basses, we'll look at some leads, we'll look at some bells and some percussions. I'm currently building a, a percussion um, patch pad, uh, patch pack. So perhaps I'll, I'll make one of those patches um, sort of on screen uh, as I go along. Uh, otherwise... Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I will see you again soon. Take care.